Hello and welcome back to LCA TV. My name is James Bromberger and joining me on the couch is Michael Davies, Chair of the Papers Committee in LCA 2004. And we're joined now by Mr. Michael Steele. Hey. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Very good. How are you enjoying LCA this year? I like it. I've been to some really good talks, so I'm having fun. Brilliant. Is it, is it a bit more fun to not be in the uh, Director's Chair this year? Oh wow, um, yes, yes definitely. Because I actually get to see talks this time. I think I saw half a talk last year. So. Yeah, that's probably about par, I think, for the, the Conference Director. So, um, what brings you to Perth? Why, why, why did you decide to come to the Perth conference? You're addicted to the LCAs? Or? Yeah, so partially that I've been to a lot of LCAs and I really like this conference. Um, I also helped out with the papers committee, so I kind of knew what was coming, mm -hmm. right? And there were talks I was very excited by seeing. Uh, and, yeah, and, he, and he wanted to hang out with his friends. Absolutely. Yeah, I was going to say, I kind of... <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of feel like LCA isn't really a conference to me anymore. It's more like a festival, right? You walk in the door and you see people you see once or twice a year that you've known for 10 years. And it's like a really welcoming community. I, I, yeah, presumably we'll all one day be 70 and we'll just be Hopefully sitting around discussing how terribly old together. we are. Yeah. We'll sort of think of ourselves, you know, we'll, we'll actually be those, you know, uh, those grey beards that we talked about, you know, in the early Unix days. <laughs> we'll actually become those, even though we're the young cool kids. I don't have enough facial hair, I'm going to have to get a self-adhesive beard. Yeah, me too. Well, that's going to be a problem. Not a big white one? Maybe a future conference could hand out beards. Yeah. But not just beards, not neck beards. You know, you could do the, do the <laughs> yeah, real thing. Sizes of beards based on experience or, or yeah. fields of depth or different right. styles. <laughs> I'm a three foot right I'm a, beard. I'm a three foot, I'm, I'm a handlebars. <laughs> it's just an extension of the different colour lanyards. We can go to length of neck beards. So um, obviously we've had a lot of Rackspace stuff, uh, stuff here at, at uh, LCA this year. Um, you guys both work for, for Rackspace. They've been a big sponsor and supporter of LCA for a couple of years. Um, what have been the highlights coming out of the Rackspace community, the, the, the Rackspace sponsorship and the OpenStack community um, here this year? So this is interesting. Um, the reason Rackspace is involved in this conference is because we went looking for good open source hackers and this is an amazing place to find good open source developers and system admins. Mm. So it kind of happened accidentally, right? We went looking for good people, there was a really high correlation, it just makes sense to keep going. Um, we do a lot of work on OpenStack and there's been a lot of OpenStack content in the conference. So that kind of makes sense as well. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily from a marketing perspective, like we're not trying to force OpenStack down anyone's throat, but uh, from a, you know working with the community, telling people what we're doing next, that kind of perspective. So the, the level of, of ability of the attendees at LCA, would you say it's medium or high or...? If I was on a hiring spree, yeah. I would be coming to LCA. I think it's very high, unusually high. Mm. Um, What's triggered that? Why, why do we get such, such uh, uh, smart and clever people coming to LCA? I think Australia in general has really good engineers. So when I was working for a US company, the feedback I got was they loved hiring Australians. We tend to be more general, more of a generalist than uh, many other countries because we tend to work for smaller organisations. And if you're looking for people who understand like a breadth of the software stack, then you know, this is a good country to target for hiring. Mm. And then this event specifically, I think because it has a lot of deep, high quality technical content, tends to attract you know, highly skilled engineers. Yes, yeah. Cool. So you've been wearing a, you know, a number of different hats in this conference, right? So immediate past Grand Page Moran, the pre immediate past director of the conference, mm -hmm. uh, co-papers chair, uh, mini conf organizer, and uh, and the senior rack space person here as well. So it's uh, it's, it's an interesting. It must be an interesting week. It must be pretty busy for you. Yeah, I'm fairly pretty tired to be honest. <laughs> um, yes, and it's hard because I keep bumping into interesting people I want to talk to, but I've got to go and run off and give a talk or you know organise a mini conf or something. So that's been a little bit awkward. All of m most of my obligations ended on Wednesday. Yeah. So kind of Thursday and Friday have been nice because I can kind of focus more on actually talking to people. Yeah. Um, do you think the conference is long enough? Huh. Or too long? I mean, given that there are so many sessions, um, is there enough time to actually do the hallway track or, or does that kind of... It's a hard question, right? Like, yeah. I really enjoy it. So from that perspective, yes, I'd love it to be longer. But I'm so tired by the end of the week. Like, I think... So the middle day of sleep. Oh, ooh, if we could have a nana nap nana each nap. day, that would be amazing. With masseuses. And I think this year uh, has done, done a good job with having lots of time for boffs. I felt like a few years ago we had so many social events that we never actually had boff time anymore. So I like this, you know, going back to actually having spots in the schedule where people, you know, with similar interests can just sit down and talk. Mm. And I think that's a very important part of the conference. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And that's kind of part of the hallway track. You know, there's more to a hallway track than that. But I think 
you know, at least it's a step in the right direction. It's interesting because uh, yesterday I was talking to uh, someone and they were suggesting that, you know, why don't we make this uh, not just five days long, we make it seven days long, go through the previous weekend and have a couple of days of like unconference style for the first couple of days like we did with the Colonel Mini Conference. Yes. And they said, you know, because they wanted that uh, level of uh, interaction between members of the community and I guess our sub-communities mm. that we all come from. Um, but I'm th- you know, again, it's like, man, that's another two days. Well, we, we've seen um, DebConf do that with Deb Camp, which exists right. for a, a couple of days before the main conference. And yes. it does become a very long block of time, which becomes incrementally harder, I think, for a large group of people to, to co-locate themselves for a period. Right. Yeah. Um, the OpenSec community is experimenting with it, with it at this conference, mm. right? So we've got a two-day developer meetup the weekend afterwards, just on the theory that everybody's actually in the same town for once, so we should probably talk. Um, but I just don't know if we'll be too tired to do meaningful work. Yeah. I guess worst case, at least we got some social time. Team building. Yeah. Well, you know, because these people work for different companies and we're all hanging out on IRC and occasionally you have to say to people, this is actually a really big problem, I need some help. Mm. And that's a little bit easier if you've met people. Yes. So it's, it, it'll be interesting to see if that experiment works out or not. It is, I guess that's one of the benefits, isn't it, of a conference like this, is that people are coming from all over the world and all, all different communities with all these different skill sets, and we are coming to, together. And, and while we can communicate, you know, email and IRC and, and other means, it's great that we can actually have some face time uh, to build those relationships, which will help us continue work for the rest of the year. Yeah. It's, a, it's an intangible, but it's an important one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I think so. lots of delegates value that too, right? We have a lot of people who come a very long way, year after year. Mm. Um, to, to come to the conference because they see value in it. So, you know, people coming from the US to Perth, yeah. that's a pretty major travel under 31 undertaking. hours, somebody said to me, they did in the air. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of the guys seem to have come via Dubai or something. Mm. So it's a, you know, pretty big trip. So well, I was gonna, I was, we're going to have to be quick because I think we've got about three minutes to get over the octagon. All right, well, let's take one more minute. Okay, tell us quickly about your stuff that you're doing in OpenStack. Now, you're a part of the technical committee, mm-hmm. so, you know, that's a pretty senior position in the project, and you're also Nova Core. What's some of the really exciting things happening in open, OpenStack that you can tell us about? There's a real focus at the moment on making um, deployers have a good time, and I think that's really important, right? Mm. Ultimately, with, with infrastructure software, the people who decide whether or not you use it are the system admins and so on that have to make it run. Right. Especially with open source, right? Because there wasn't really a sales relationship necessarily. Yes. Uh, and we've been spending a lot of effort on the last couple of releases in um, and making sure those people have a good time. And there's kind of a sustained focus on that. And I think uh, that's probably the most exciting thing we're working on at the moment. There's lots of other stuff that looks, for example, important to the Australian market. Like certainly in Canberra, you know, having a, a solid VMware hypervisor driver is really important. Right. And so there's you know lots of stuff like that happening as well. But I think ultimately you can produce as much software as you want, but if the sysadmins hate running it, right. you're not yeah, going to have it's not going to happen, is it? Yeah. And so that, that's really exciting. The scale of the project is also ridiculous, right? You know, a few years ago we had two or three projects and we've now got 20 or 30 right. and more pop up all the time. Mm. Uh, and it's not really infrastructure as a service anymore. We've started saying, well, we should be providing the tools to build you know, the apps you want to run on the cluster. Not We don't want to write a programming language, but if you need uh, queuing as a service, for example, right. that's an obvious piece of you know, software as a service mm. that we should think about providing if there's no good alternative already. Cool. Awesome. Well, We're I think we should probably wrap up then. Cool. Thank you ever so much. Thank you very much we'll for having me. see you again me. next year. Thank you, Michael. Take care.